this title of this weekend is integration and integration is means lots of things coming together uh, and that's essentially what we're doing we're going to be focusing mostly on the vestibular system which is has a very high level of integration from not only the inner ear but from the proprioceptors in our body and being practitioners who deal with with proprioceptors to a very very high degree it's probably important that we understand what the effect of change or modulation of those proprioceptive functions are on the functions of different parts of the brain and the integration centers. Now the vestibular system is actually one of the oldest of the integration centers. Um, it's also linked to autonomic function as well. So we're going to be going into that in great detail and Dr. Cook will be presenting uh, a lot of information about those pathways and how that system works. Uh, and also how it fails. <laughs> so through the course of this weekend we're going to be learning about the vestibular system but we're also going to be learning about things metaphorically. So we're going to be having a lot of information about a lot of things but it's all going to be reducing down to some very very simple uh, simple points. And really what we need to know is how do we take what we see with our patient as our diagnosis and our understanding of what's happening at a deep level and reduce that down to a simple therapy because if essentially we're going to be doing something to the patient. What do we do to the patient? What do they need? Are they, uh, what kind of problem do they have? So the first thing we're going to be looking at is reducing their problem down to either a fixation or an instability. So we're going to look at, as we often do, look at joints and look at their fi fixations, but I'm also going to teach you how to see where there's an instability in a joint, okay? So from a practical perspective, you're going to be learning tools to manage both fixations and instabilities in joints. Um, prior to doing that, you need to understand more about how that system is controlled, how it functions, and that's why we're going to be using uh, the vestibular system as a very, very practical metaphor for you to be able to see your patients better, not, not only a metaphor, but rather a window into your patient's function and uh, because the more sort of granularity and detail we have about our understanding uh, and with, within our understanding of a patient, the greater our precision and accuracy of the tools we're going to apply. And that's very, very important with adjusting to neutral. This is an incredibly, incredibly precise technique. There's two main components. We're resolving either fixations or we're resolving instabilities. I'm going to teach you both of those tools. I'm going to teach you how to do that in the neck, in the, in the lumbar spine, in many of the joints. <clears throat> I'm going to teach you how to resolve instability as well. So <clears throat> we have a lot of fun stuff to cover. And, um, but first we're going to say, what is it that's causing uh, a problem? So what is, our, what is our diagnosis doing for us? So yes, we've covered what we're going to be doing as a treatment, but how are we going to uh, get to that point of the treatment? And for that, we need to know what the problem is. So what is it that's causing the problem? We're going to reduce it down to one thing. So again, it's going to be a fixation, or it's going to be an instability. It's going to be the biggest thing that's there, and it's going to be the thing that's affecting their life in the biggest way, and, uh, and, and then we just need to figure out what it is. And it should be fairly simple. It's probably the first thing that's going to come out of their mouth. I always ask my patients, <clears throat> how can I help you? And they'll always tell me one or two things. Either they're stuck and they can't get going, or they're so stable that they're unstable that they're out of control. So they are going to tell me whether they need to be unstuck or whether they need to be put back together. Uh, it's really as simple as that. Um, so when we look at um, the vestibular system, we're going to be looking at clues to tell us what that person needs. I mean, obviously they're going to tell us these things verbally, but they're also going to show us within our exam. So what does a fixed what does fixed look like in the vestibular system? It, well, they're going to be stuck in one place and unable to get back to that balance point. They're going to be just stuck in one place. We've got to find out which way they're stuck and we've got to give them a good shove in the right direction. So with the help of your diagnosis, you'll figure out which direction and give them a good fast kick in that direction. Okay, so that's one thing that could be happening. That's some of the clues in the vestibular system and all the things that Dr. Cook is going to be teaching you about the vestibular system. I want you to think in that sort of parable, kind of metaphorical way. What is this 
finding? What is this patient? What is this disorder telling me? Is this a disorder of someone being fixed? Is it a disorder of someone being unstable? So, what does unstable look like in the vestibular system? So that's someone that's moving too much without a clear sort of center. They're wobbling all over the place, okay? Uh, and they need their hand held and led back to a safe place. They're just all over the place. They need you to grab a hold of them and say, look, I know where you need to go and I'm going to take you there, okay? So with the help of your diagnosis, you will figure out where their center is and you will hold them there until they get it, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we do that with adjusting to neutral. So again, everything's boiling down to fixations or instabilities. Um, now, what do those boil down to? <laughs> well, obviously we're doing that to try to help our patients, and, um, but there's, there's actually a word or sort of like a common goal to both of these treatments. So if someone's fixed and you're moving them or if they're unstable and you're holding them still, there's, there's one word that can describe that, that, that common goal, and the one word is recalibrate. So recalibrate means to make sure that all of the sensors are in agreement with each other, okay? Is every proprioceptor in my body giving good and accurate information to my brain about where I am and which way I'm moving, okay? That's what we're going to do. We're going to recalibrate all of these sensors. So our goal as chiropractors and what we're trying to do with our patients, with their spines, with their joints, is to recalibrate their joints. So that might mean, um, you know, doing, doing a, a, a adjustment in their neck or in their back or in their shoulder. It could be many, many, many things. But you need to have that single objective. Um, so we need to take whatever stories that they have and put them together and kind of resolve that conflict and that dichotomy by recalibrating. So it could take different forms. So the dichotomy is important. So it's important to be able to break things into two components. So whatever it is that we're looking at with our patients, we want to look at it in a left or right, forward or backward kind of perspective. What is that dichotomy? It helps us focus our diagnostics and our treatment into two simple options. So this is how we start. We reduce things down to pairs and we see where there is a clear imbalance. We use lots of intersecting pairs to gain greater granularity and precision. And then again, we decide whether that is a fixation or an instability. So we have the old adage of pounding down high spots. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's all fine as long as the spot you're pushing down needs to go exactly straight down. It's, it, it kind of works, but it's kind of, sort of like, well, if you're left, I'm going to push you right. If you're forward, I'm going to push you back. It's kind of that perspective. It's a little bit too broad, and it's just being uh, too uh, polarized in our diagnosis is not good. However, as long as we have precision within that, and that's what we mean by creating, creating granularity. So as we start to explore and understand the complexities of, for instance, the joints, we'll learn the simplicity within that. So in order to learn about, for first we have to learn about how everything integrates, how all these things are coming together, and then, so we have to learn all that complexity just learn the integration of how these things tie together and then discover the simplicity inside it. And then we will apply a specific and precise treatment. So an example in joint motion is that in joints you have sides, you have two sides, you have left and right. The problem could be on the left, the problem could be on the right, but you also have anterior and posterior. So this gives us greater granularity. Now we have anterior and posterior, so we also have left anterior and we have right posterior, okay? Um, but then we also have layers of our muscles. So if we're dealing with muscles around joints, we have deep muscles and we have superficial muscles. They're controlled in different ways and they have different functions. So we need to figure out is something deep or is it superficial? And we also need to figure out where it is in the body. <laughs> is it rostral? Is it caudal? You know? So we have to find a very, very precise place and a very, very precise uh, component of motion. So I'm going to be teaching you about all those motions. 
and how we can feel where there is fixations or instabilities, left, right, anterior, posterior, deep, superficial, and rostral and caudal. So that's going to be fun. And uh, so here's an example. I may have a drawing here of an overlap between anterior, posterior, left, right, extrinsics, intrinsics, or deep and superficial, and rostral and caudal. So the more we can understand even at each joint or in each part of the body that needs help, um, the more we can find out exactly all of the nuances of these different types of motions and vectors, um, then it's, we get greater and greater granularity and we get greater and greater precision with our treatments. So it's more than just pushing down high spots. Um, so simple problems need simple solutions. So again, it's either going to be a fixation or and a fixation we're going to resolve with the high velocity of low amplitude stretch. Um, so it's simple um, and it's obviously going to be in a particular place or we're going to show them a pivot point and hold them in that center. So that's what we do for an instability. If something's unstable, it doesn't have a center. So we have to use a technique, uh, and I'll show you some techniques that we can use to hold that joint in its center and help them to release any restrictions uh, that would be keeping it from that center. In other words, if they're way off center, we're gonna help to bring them back to a center with this therapy. Um, so what is adjusting to neutral? It gives you a very, very precise shove back towards the center, and it also shows you where the center is so that you can have a pivot point. So we're either doing a shove, which is like a vector, or we're rotating, okay? So we're doing one or we're doing the other. So what's the secret? The secret to adjusting to neutral is a secret that's essentially built into every one of our nervous systems. Um, and it's that the things that make lasting change are experiences that happen very, very fast or things that happen very, very slow. So um, things that happen very, very fast are things that happen to us. So like traumas, we have a trauma that's something that hits us that has an effect on our nervous system to make that, that experience last the effects of that experience, of that trauma, whatever is done to the muscles and the function of the joints will persist over time. It's a very, very fast experience that has a long lasting effect. Um, things that happen very, very slowly, um, and these are things that often have to require some degree of attention, um, you know, like slow stretches, things like yoga, um, when you're doing something very, very slowly and bringing your attention to it and feeling a pivot point, um, this is one example of something that can have a long-lasting effect. We're going to be going into the physiological aspects of why these things are true. Uh, we know they're true, we can see that they're true, uh, we have therapies around these already. Um, we know this is the secret, um, but I'm just going to place string it out very plain and simple for you, and we're also going to go into the detail of that so that you can really understand um, how beautiful that complexity is. Um, so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be doing very, very fast things or very, very slow things uh, to create a lasting change. Uh, so when you do it, you have to make sure it's a good one, okay? You're not just pounding down any high spot, you have to be um, very, very, very precise, okay? And I will teach you amazing tools to be able to be precise, and you'll find your own way through it. I'm gonna give you lots and lots of advice. Myself and Dr. Cook are going to give you all kinds of windows into your patient's function. So that's the next thing, is to learn to look deeply into your patients, to understand them very, very deeply. Don't be afraid of looking into the depths of things because you know that when you get in there, you're only, all you need to do is reduce it down to a dichotomy, okay? Um, so you give them what they need, where they need it. You're going to figure out what type of therapy it is and where you're going to apply it. That's all that it has to reduce down to. That is a secret. So this weekend, you will understand that the ultimate purpose of our treatments is to recalibrate. The way you will do it is to choose whether they need a resolution for a fixation 
or an instability. Uh, you'll learn about the complexities of the integrative centers and you'll use many perspectives to gain precision and granularity. You'll find precise vectors to adjust the joint back to neutral and you'll help your, fi your patient find an anchor point to find that center. So that's what we're going to do. I hope that uh, that sounds like fun and um, thanks for watching. 